How many of you have ever felt alone? How many of you ever felt that God was far away from you? Only once? No, I mean only once. Have you only had that feeling once? No, it's happened over and over and over again, right? We feel like we're alone. Even sitting in a crowd of people sometimes, you feel like nobody around you gets you. and no, Nothing, no matter what, God is nowhere near to you, right? We've all been there. We all have those feelings down inside of us. And one of the things that's happened recently to me, some of you don't even know this story. Um, some of the people on a call committee don't even know the full extent to this story. But I was called to be your pastor in December of last year, correct? But how many of you know where I was at before that? Yes, my family does. <laughs> a few people do. I resigned my previous call on February 15, 2012. 2012. That's two years ago, this past February. Right? I was without a call. I was looking for a call. And it got to be funny, actually, because I would go to places and I would help with things in the Senate, in Southwest Texas Senate, and I would help with things in youth events and, and help plan different things and be at Senate assemblies and places. And we'd sit down in a group of people. And the first thing that we would do is when we sat down in that group of people was, you know, the get to know you kind of things, right? So we go around the room and we introduce each other. And people would stand up and say who they are and what church they're from. And all I could think in the back of my mind was, I interviewed with that congregation. I interviewed with that congregation. Everybody that went around the room. I interviewed probably with almost every congregation in our Senate and a bunch of congregations in the regions and Senates close to Southwest Texas Senate, being the other two Senates in Texas for a while. And then it got opened up. And even at our council meeting this past Tuesday, Len brought up a congregation. He said, this congregation in, and I'm not going to mention it, but you know where it's at, an unnamed congregation does such and such and such. And my first thought when I heard him say the name of that congregation was, I interviewed with that congregation, and I actually did interview with that congregation. I interviewed with so many congregations over the year and a half, almost two years that I was looking for a call, that it got to be a dark time, wondering what in the world God is doing and how in the world are we going to get out of this. It came to the point of almost thinking of wanting to do something else of giving up ministry altogether and going out and finding something else to make sure that my family was taken care of. We get to those points in time and we wonder where in the world is God at and what in the world is going on in our lives, right? We all get there. But if I had given up, then I wouldn't be here today to be able to tell you that story, to be able to connect it with what God is telling us today in the Gospel readings and in our, in our readings this morning. God is always there. Always. And we can all get to those times when we feel like we're alone. Right? You lose a job. Even if you have a job, you're not able to provide for your family. You don't know if you're going to be able to pay the bills this month as they come in. We get in over our heads and we keep digging that hole deeper and deeper and deeper. It's like we're being looked down upon because we're different by those around us. If you're in school and you don't dress the right way, or you don't look the right way, or you don't act the right way, people look down upon you because you don't fit in, you're being shunned because of the things that you believe or the person that you are, you're being shunned because of the lifestyle that you live that's not in the normal of what's going on, right? We hear of people that get diagnosed with cancer, people who have tumors, people that feel like there's nowhere to go, there's nowhere to turn. We all have times in our lives and things in our lives that are weighing us down and pulling us away from God and making us think that God doesn't care for us and God is nowhere near to us. Right? But Paul told the Romans this morning, he asked them a question in verse 35. He said, what can separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardships, will distress, will persecution, will famine, will nakedness, will peril, will sword? Now this, this might seem like an arbitrary list to us, but this was actually a list of things that the Roman community was going through at that point in time. Everything. Someone in that community was facing those. Famine, nakedness, peril, 
sword. They were facing the Roman government because of what they believed. Each and every one of these things are real for that community. They're not just an arbitrary list. These are real things that they were facing. And the body of Christ is facing them today, right? Through the list that I gave above. Losing a job, not being able to pay the bills, wondering what's going to go on, finding out our loved ones are, are diagnosed with cancer or some other inoperable disease. These are all things that we hear about and weigh us down. Everywhere in the body of Christ and within us here in the body of the believers that make up St. John's Oswamico, across this sanctuary, we all have something that the world would tell us will keep Christ from us. Each and every one of us has at least one thing that the people outside these walls would tell us is a reason that Christ would abandon us. But Paul asked the question to the Romans, what can separate us from the love of Christ and God gives us an answer. What does God's answer say to us? God gives an answer of what will separate us from the love of Christ. And He says absolutely nothing. Nothing. In verse 37 it says, No. God says no. And we're used to hearing God say no, right? We ask Him, God, I'd really like to have that convertible red car. And God, I'd really like to win the lottery. And God, I'd really like to get that really great job. And what does God say? No. no. Right, he says no. Right? And we're used to hearing God say no. When we ask for things that, okay, maybe we really don't need them, but it might be nice if we had them but it doesn't really have an impact on how our life is going to be lived out if we have them or not. God says no to us. But here God does not say no to something that we want. God says no to what the world says to us. That these are things that are going to keep Christ from you. He doesn't say no to what we want and don't get. He doesn't say no to stop us from enjoying life. God says no to what we think will separate us from Christ from the hardships that we think hold us back, from the brokenness in our lives that we think keeps Christ away from us. He says, no, in all things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Christ loved you so much that He went to the cross and died for you. Nothing in this world can ever separate that. No matter how far we think we feel away from Him, no matter how far the world will tell us that He's away from us. We are always victorious because Paul said it to the Romans that we are more than conquerors. We are absolutely 100% victorious. We have won the victory. An easy way for us to look at this is Mother Teresa. How many of you know who Mother Teresa is? How many of you know of all the great things that Mother Teresa did? Right? She gave up everything that she had to live in the slums and the streets of Calcutta with the people that had no one to love them. How many of you know that for 40 years Mother Teresa fought with the fact that she felt like God wasn't even close to her? She wrote about it. It's called The Dark Night of the Soul. Mother Teresa spent almost 40 years thinking that God didn't love her and God wasn't with her. While she did everything that she did in the streets of Calcutta. Everything. Even when we think that God has left us, God is absolutely still with us. 100%. Always with us. Right? God gives us, Jesus gives us an image of what the kingdom of God looks like. He gives us five this week and one from last week. Right? How many of you understand what that means? A mustard seed, leaven in wheat, or leaven in flour. Selling, finding treasure in someone else's field and then selling it and going back and buying it. That sounds a little underhanded to me. Um, the, the, the mustard seed is a little underhanded too. If you don't know, um, mustard is a, is a weed that is also unkosher. So a Jew would never think about planting it in their garden. 
Leaven also is something that the Jews would not use because of the Passover. It's something that we didn't use. And just a little bit of yeast would go through those three measures of flour, which is about 150 pounds of flour. It's not some small, minute thing of flour. It's a huge amount of flour that we're talking about here. And then we're going and selling everything that we have to buy a field because we found some treasure in it when we were um, on somebody's property illegally looking through their stuff. We found something there and went and bought it. And then finding the pearl and all that. These are subversive, underhanded kind of things that Jesus is telling us here that we're not getting because we don't know the whole backstory. But this is how God describes the kingdom. Right? Because nothing, no matter what it is we do or what it is the world does to us or how we feel about where God is at, nothing is going to separate us from God and the love that He has for us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation, not death or life, doesn't matter whether you're dead or alive. It doesn't matter if angels come to do something or rulers of this world. That's both life and death. That's both powers that be in the heavens and powers that be here on earth. Nor things that are here with us now, nor anything that's going to happen tomorrow or the next day or the next day. Anything in all of creation. Nothing is going to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. So no matter where you're at, or how dark it seems, know that you're in absolutely good company. Because Mother Teresa was there. And I was there. Not that I'm saying I'm anything like Mother Teresa. Because I'm not. But you're in good company, walking through the dark valley. And the best thing to know is that regardless of the fact that Mother Teresa was there and that I was there and that everyone else in the sanctuary was there, God is there with you and Christ is walking with you hand in hand. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, just believe that Jesus has a hold of your hand and is walking with you through everything that you go through. I'd like to finish this morning with a prayer from Thomas Merton. My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think that I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may not, may, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone.